common theories that I found, and this was more locals that have lived in Yosemite and hiked it a lot, was that she went off trail and got hurt, either fell in one of those deep crevasses or she got so turned around because obviously she didn't have a map with her. She didn't have a compass. Um, she's 14 years old. Uh, how many 14 year olds are experts at, you know, navigating in the wilderness, uh, without any kind of aid, you know, topographic map, a compass, a GPS, well, anything like at that night. at night. I mean, I'm, I'm very good at navigating, but I'm significantly diminished at night. Yeah. So I think I think it could be highly possible that, you know, if she's exploring alone off trail, which several locals that, you know, commented on this case said is very dangerous in Yosemite, especially at dusk and not with no navigation equipment and not really experienced in the area. She also was likely distracted. So think of it. She's there to take pictures. So she's if she goes off trail and she's not kind of familiar with the hazards of that park. She could be looking at like cool lakes and maybe there's birds and other animals not paying attention to her footing. And it would be very easy to, you know, fall into one of those crevasses or fall off a cliff even. I mean, we hear the stories at least once a year of people trying to take a selfie. Uh, it, it happened at Grand Canyon uh, not too long ago. Someone yeah, was and slipping off the edge or something. Yeah, like someone's that. trying to take a selfie and they just back themselves right off the cliff. So it's not unheard of for people to do that when they're distracted. So I think a really one theory that I think is really plausible is that that's exactly what happened. If she's out there to take pictures, I would say it'd be likely of her to maybe go off trail if she saw something cool and just kind of oblivious to her footing. I know when I'm hiking, I'm always looking at my feet, even on a trail, you know, a well-groomed trail, just because you never... Especially if you got 40 pounds on your back, if you trip on a rock or something, you might fall and hurt yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, and I've definitely done that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think I think that's a, a, a possible case. Another, another theory that I saw crop up quite a bit was some people, now they're not knocking the search and rescue effort. But they were kind of saying that it's the search and rescue kind of seemed to cover a small area when you consider how large the park is. So she's, you know, hiking to this lake relatively light. So she's got really no no gear on. So she can probably she's young and you know healthy. She could probably cover some pretty good ground. The weather mm-hmm. the weather was good. There was no issues with the weather. There's no snow on the ground. So the fact that they only had a three to five square mile radius. Uh, does seem kind of small in the sense too if she got off trail and got turned around and started hiking like completely in the wrong direction not towards one of the lakes and just kind of off into the woods she could probably I mean there's a good chance she could get outside of the search grid pretty fast so they they must have been pretty confident they had a, a, a good idea of where she went missing then yeah you would you, the the searchers must have known more details about the the area where they they think she went missing than is publicly available but you know we always say that if you go missing in a national park the first second you think you're missing stop and yeah, stay there not move not move and if, and if you can get to a trail get to the trail yeah start making noise start yelling create try maybe try to create a small fire to get smoke up in the air but do not continue if you're completely lost and you have no sense of direction of where you're going, the the worst thing you can do is to start just aimlessly walking around. You might walk into, <clears throat> into a search grid that was already searched. You might walk out of the search grid. So you, you got to give the searchers their best chance to find you. So, you know, you don't want to keep just moving around if you have no idea. If, if you have some marker that you see off in the distance and you know what direction that is, then, you know, maybe you have a better shot of being found if you hike to that spot. Yeah. But yeah. So people think maybe she got so turned around that she just started wandering around, wandered out of the search grid, wandered into a grid that was already searched. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I think, I think those are two uh, possible theories. I, I would rule out animal attack. We always like to rule out things. I guess it's not. Yeah, I would agree with you because they didn't find anything. And I think that's really, I think what we've, what we've learned and what I've learned from doing this show is that 
I thought animal attacks were way more prevalent than they apparently are. Oh, absolutely. Especially like, bear I, attacks. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's probably because, I mean, like, the cool shows are on that type of stuff, and they're always looking for sensationalist stuff, but... Yeah. Yeah, I was I was very surprised with the amount of, or the lack of animal attacks with how many people go in the woods. So, based on the fact that it's, as we always say, it's extremely evident when an animal attacks somebody they didn't find any evidence of that at all no and if she would have been attacked within that that search grid that five mile square mile search grid they would have found evidence of a struggle a predation they would have found you know how terrible this sounds they would have found you know pieces of clothing and yeah uh, and they didn't find any of that they didn't find any bones or anything and you just looking at the animals in the park the only, you know, that's not to say mountain lions and black bears wouldn't, if someone died and their body was left there, I think the animals definitely would probably move in. But oh, yeah. I you would so. still find evidence of it. They're not going to consume the entire person's body. And so that's why I'm kind of ruling out um, animal attack. And it is amazing, 4 million people a year in that park. How often do you hear about people dying from animal attacks in Yosemite? Yeah, I, uh, not often at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so, and, and even in in those high traffic parks, you're like have the the dumb tourists that are feeding the animals and getting like close contact, and like you always hear about somebody getting gored by a buffalo. They don't die, but like because they just like will walk up to a giant animal and be like, "All right, I'm gonna take a selfie with you," and you're like, "That that's a wild animal. <laughs> like you can't do that." I mean, you remember that video a couple years ago in Yellowstone of that little girl that got flipped up through the air by a buffalo. Yeah, and exactly. I think she was unharmed. <laughs> oh yeah, she was. She was. Per- yeah, that's why it was funny because she was completely okay. But it's like, yeah, don't let your kids walk up to like a fifteen hundred pound animal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They can well, just flick its head just a little bit, and you're airborne. In in Denali last uh, fall when we were hiking, we saw a guy. We were hiking back to our car, and we saw a guy off the main road photographing this uh, female moose. He was maybe twenty feet from it. And the thing was staring him down, and we stopped because we thought we were going to witness somebody getting trampled by a moose. Yeah. And luckily, the moose ended up, you know, it kind of got closer to him and then stopped and then walked away. But it's just, it's things like that, that even with people like that who have no regard for how powerful these animals are, there's still very few injuries and even fewer deaths Yeah. in these parks. So I think we rule out animal attack in this Agreed. case. Um, elements exposure. I think she had the clothes on to survive a night in Yosemite. It sounds like the weather was perfect. It's mid July. So it's pretty warm. And like we said, it's very dry that time of year. Yeah. Benefit of the doubt with survival. I would even give her three nights. Yeah. I would like if I'm, if I'm, if I'm stretching it just based on the time of year, uh, the fact that there is water around. Yeah. Her biggest uh, concern would, would be lack of water if she couldn't f- somehow find a lake or a you know one of the many lakes in the area. Yeah, that time of year you can. I mean, I've I've done cowboy camping before where you're basically just out in the in the elements, no covers, just like with a pillow. Yeah, and you you can be just fine. Yep, I I think I'm also going to rule out foul play by one of the members of the group. I think the most likely suspect if you if you're going to go the foul play route would be Gerald. He was the basically the last person to have contact with her, but he was in view of the rest of the group the entire time, and they he was saw in view. And I think too old to pull anything off. Yeah, and she walked away into the woods and disappeared, and he stayed. He was still in view of the rest yeah, of the group, so I don't it, I don't see how he could be a suspect in it. And everyone else was down at camp, um, so. I, there is the possibility that she ran into somebody on her hike to the lake and something happened. But again, they were way up in Yosemite. It, it's not a quick hike out of there, especially at, you know, dusk. Yep. So and that's, that's where I'd say my two theories lied in either some form of abduction or accident. Yeah. I think of the plausible ones, I'm going to go with she walked off trail to photograph and she wasn't being careful of where she was walking and she had some kind of uh, accident where she, she fell down a crevasse or off a cliff or something and her body got um, 
you know, lodged like that local said, where they can never, sometimes they're never discovered. Yeah, and that's I, I and see this is where I'd say I'm ignorant to the idea of crevasses that aren't related to ice fields or ice sheets because I know I've heard lots of stories and firsthand accounts from people who've lost friends in, in like an ice crevasse. Oh yeah. And it's terrifying to think of because they say they can hear them. Yeah. But there's so many crevasses you just don't know where they went. Yeah, and I think crevasse in this sense, you know, just uh and I guess an opening and, you know, a kind of a, I don't know. It's a crevasse. <laughs> yep. But so those are the, the likely theories. So I, I don't know. What do you think, Joe? I think you, you mentioned, you said abduction or maybe. I think abduction is far fetched based on their location. The fact that everyone for the group was accounted for when she went. Yeah. Um, Someone would see her getting abducted out of there. I do. I don't think I, this is obviously an unsolved case. Unlike some of our other ones, I think it is more clear cut. And I would say, I agree with you. I think she went off trail Yeah. and had some sort of accident. And if you fall into a deep enough crevasse, maybe the dogs don't pick it up. Maybe, you know, it's, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of underground caves and things like that, where maybe she went down some little tiny little opening into a big cavern and, mm-hmm. Well, it would be interesting to know details from the search and rescue, but this is going to lead into my next thing I was going to talk about. It, it would be great to know if the dog teams picked up any kind of scent. Were they tracking something and then it just stopped? We don't know any of this information because the federal government has flat out refused to release the case file. Uh, On so, just this case? Yes. So... I did Even with the FOI requests? Oh, yeah. So, I obviously, everyone's... Well, that's, that's uh, <laughs> suspect. Highly yeah, suspect. Highly suspect. Everyone's familiar with the missing 411 books. Um, David Politis has a whole series of books where he covers a lot of cases like this. He definitely takes a more conspiracy theory route in his books. And, you know, Bigfoot or all these, you know, other... Th- you know, things that are less likely. <laughs> I'll sure. But say we, that. yeah, we, we entertain them. We entertain them, but he does bring up a very interesting fact about this case. Um, he and other, there's been other people too. They have filed several, uh, freedom of information act requests with the federal government to get this case file re- released. And they've been flat out denied. They, they are literally told they will never get this case. Uh, he even David Politis has um, he's appealed the decision and he lost the appeal and the the federal government used the excuse that they don't want to release the case file in case they switch it from a missing person to a criminal case, which is really strange because the case is over 30 years old with no leads. And the, the chief, the, the, the possible suspect in the case, Gerald, has long been dead. So uh, David Politis brings up, you know, he, he's going down the conspiracy route. He he's basically says, what is the federal government hiding from the public in this case? Like, What's who, in this who's case left file? to protect? Yeah. What, why would they flat out deny releasing a case file on a 30 plus year old case that has no leads and well, they not to lighten it, but it's it's a random 14 year old girl, the National Park. Yeah, it's not like something that was around uh, Area 51 during yeah. some government. Te- like it's it's in a national park and yep. it just seems a little odd. Yeah. So uh, that's a that's an interesting fact about this case and the fact that they have released case files for other cases that are this old that are still open missing person cases they've released those cases no issues i've even uh filed a couple freedom of information act requests and gotten case files on other people that have gone missing that are still open and no issue so it it could just be they are being stubborn and don't want to release this case but it leads you to think what are they hiding (laughs) yeah it's very bad optics yes i i can't for the life of me think why they wouldn't release the case file on this, especially if it has 
information regarding the search and rescue mission. Like, did the dog teams pick up a scent? Were they tracking something? You know, who were who were law enforcement looking at as suspects if they think it could be a criminal case? Uh, so it's, I don't know, it's just bizarre. And it it just adds to the mystique of the case. Are uh, there other missing persons in this area that are similar? Like, uh, yes. is there like a pattern? I will get to that. <laughs> oh, so I'm jumping the gun a little bit. A little bit. Um, before we get to that little tidbit, there was another fact about this case that is kind of odd. Um, so it's still listed as a missing person, and she was a child when she went missing, but she was never added to the National Center for Missing Exploited Children's Database, which I'm pretty sure... Is that like it, a default when you have anyone that's a minor that goes missing? Yeah. Normally, normally if a, a minor goes missing, they get added to the to that database, and... For whatever reason, she never was added, and I don't. I don't believe she's in the database to this day, even though she wouldn't be a child now. Uh, so that's that's another interesting fact. Just I don't know that it means anything, but when you kind of add it up with all the other weird, like the case file not being released, and it just kind of adds to okay, this is more than just your typical missing person case. So. Uh, you jump the gun a little bit, but there are three other people that two other people that went missing and another person that was found deceased in very strange circumstance during this time period in that same area or just yes, in, it, at Yosemite in this same area. So uh, the first odd case was 1968. And this is really strange. An unidentified man to this day hasn't been identified was found in a crevasse exactly one mile north of Sunrise Lake in an area called, I believe, Tanyea Peak. I apologize if I got that wrong. Uh, so a couple of questions about this that jump out right away. This is a pretty remote area of the park, and they people want to know how, how did he get there? How has this body never been identified? How do you, how do you find a body in 1968 and 2020? Like nobody noticed he was missing? No, they found – yeah, no one – no one reported but like I'm him. saying, like to report someone missing, they go, "Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, my loved one went that way, and now he's been gone." And yeah, that must be him. So yeah, to this day, he has not been identified, at least publicly. And so there's a lot of strange, you know, how does that happen? How how could this guy have gotten there, uh, in this remote part of the park? Uh, it also is interesting. How did they find him? How did how did they know to find him in this crevasse? So a lot of just weird uh, little facts about this case. Uh, the next disappearance happened in 19, uh, 1976. A guy by the name of Jeff Estes disappeared en route to May Lake, which is exactly 1.5 miles away from both Sunrise Lake and Tanea Peak. So the interesting question people ask about this disappearance is, this guy was backcountry hiking, so he had hiking gear, camping gear, all that stuff, and no, they never found any of his gear. So, so uh, he was in the crevasse, and none of his gear. No, so made it. No, the guy from 1968 was the one they found in the crevasse. This okay. was a, a second disappearance in 1976. Okay. Yeah. So this guy, the first guy was found, but they never identified him. The second guy disappeared. They never found him or any of his gear. And he disappeared in a location that's exactly 1.5 miles away from both Sunrise Lake and Tanea Peak. So, wow. a little strange. <laughs> uh, then, obviously, you have in 1981, Stacy disappears en route to Sunrise Lake. And then the final strange disappearance around this time, 1988, Timothy Barnes disappears on the Murphy Creek Trail, which starts at Tanea Lake and goes northeast a half mile to Poly Dome Lake, which is also in the general area where Stacy went missing. And again, he was backcountry hiking. He had all kinds of gear with him, hiking gear, camping gear, and all of it's gone. They never found any of the gear. They didn't find him. And again, he went missing in this general area. So within a span of 20 years, you had three people go missing under strange circumstances and one identified body found that's still unidentified. <laughs> so... That it, is that is very weird, and that just reeks of like active serial killer. 
<laughs> yeah, right? And it's uh, not to say uh, Yosemite is a huge park, and when you have 4 million people visiting it a year, people are going to go missing. And like, yeah, yeah. But and they usually when get you, found. When you narrow it down within a like a three square mile area and right. all weird, yeah, that's when it starts raising flags. Yeah, and it's 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 a specific twenty year time period, and then it kind of there's nothing else after that. At least nothing else that it. The reports I read about these disappearances, it was really it took a lot of digging to find this information, so it's not readily available. But it is interesting that it happened in that just 20-year period, and then there's really nothing after that in that little area. So yeah, maybe there like was some that, kind that, of serial killer. That does change my entire <laughs> perspective on it. It really does, because that's, that's way too coincidental. Yeah. So to be something that's... It may wow. be that ties back into why the MPS won't release the case file. Maybe they know yeah, maybe. of a serial killer and they make reference in the case file and they don't want to scare the public from Yosemite, so they didn't release the case or file. Or if, if it's like legitimately an active investigation. Yeah. And they don't want to tip Or it. maybe they found Bigfoot and they just don't yeah. want to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. So it, that, 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 That's the whole thing with optics. If you don't release the information, you yeah. basically grant everyone the ability to go make up their own version. Yeah, people go wild with, you know, crazy theories. And this is just the the more sane theories. There's a lot of really crazy stuff out there on, you know, Reddit boards. and. Oh, I'm sure. Well, other... as soon as you have the government does something that it doesn't normally do on this random, seemingly random one case, Yeah, it's like, okay, that's, you know, proof positive. We're just going to bring out all the crazies. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's kind of what I got for the uh, the weird facts relating in this case. I think there's definitely there was something going on there to have that cluster of people going missing in that time frame. But Does it fall on a ley line? A ley line. The those like uh, gravitational. Oh. <laughs> I think it's a ley line, or was that like where you find water? I don't, I don't know. know. I know what you're. I know what you're getting at. I, I'm bad. I'm, I'm bad at memorizing all these things. Yeah, right. I I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of weird gravitational thing going on in that part of the park. Yeah. I uh, I didn't find that out in my initial research, but uh, yeah. So this is uh, this case has been talked about a lot, and I think a lot of people have interest in it. It's one of the. Whenever I look up our our search information for our website, it's it's one of the missing people that gets searched for the most. So that's, there is yeah, a that's that is crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of interest out there in this case, even though it's it's you know it's a pretty old case now, and probably a lot of the people that work the SAR mission are retired or passed away. And yeah, I would love to see like what their statements are, or if anything has happened to any of the members of the team. Like, I'd love to get that report. <laughs> yeah, we need that report. We need that uh, the report. Well, so. We could sick our listeners on it if everyone just starts submitting FOI requests on Stacey Harris and see yeah. what happens. See what happens. Uh, you'll probably get denied. I think uh, I'm sure people are have been doing that. Yeah. Um, well, and a and, guy like David Politis, like he's got some clout and pull above and beyond like what we have significantly. Yeah, so if he can't even get it, there may be some kind of animus in the MPS towards David Politis at this point. I think I'm it's, sure it's, there's no secret that he, he definitely thinks there's uh cover ups going on in the MPS and definitely thinks that they're, they're not being truthful to the public about the hazards of national parks. I mean, we always talk about, you know, national parks are dangerous if you're unprepared and you go in there thinking that, you know, you're the, the king of the castle, so to say, yep. <laughs> No, absolutely. But I don't know that there's some mass conspiracy going on in the parks that is being held from the public, but I do think the general public doesn't take Yeah, I don't think hiking national parks serious. But yeah, they I I don't think they they think when it, they see like a park on TV and there's a parking lot and things like that it's extremely safe and it it's it really can be dangerous. You know, yeah. a lot of a lot of people go in and out of the parks just fine with no issue. Yep. Even though they're not dressed appropriately all day long, but 
it's an odds thing and you just don't want to put yourself against the odds of something terrible happening. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. And it, David Pilatus even mentions that he had his initial uh, request, uh, an agent from the park service actually reached out to him, asked questions, which is illegal to do. Um, or the, to try and like figure out why they want to know. Yeah. There, the fed, the law states that you don't have to have any reason U.S. citizens are allowed to request federal government documents for no. They don't need to know your reason. It yeah, as long as it's not like a matter of national security. Yeah, as there long as it's no reason. Yeah, not a national security issue, or they're not going to release cases that are still open investigations because sure. obviously. But the federal government has no right in asking anybody why you're asking for a case file. So yeah. it was very inappropriate for the park service to reach out and ask him questions about why he requested the case. But again, that adds to why, okay, why won't they release it? Why are they reaching out and asking questions about it? Yeah. They're <laughs> like, making it weird. They're making it weird. They could just said, no, we're not releasing it and end it there. But then they had a guy reached out to him. And so I don't know. It just, it's probably just government incompetence <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day. But yeah. <laughs> yeah it just makes for it makes you know people's minds run wild which i think they could have avoided by just releasing the darn case file nope i agree with you 